Hello and welcome to another episode with us here at Fantasy and North. This guide will be slightly more advanced than the seven mini guides that I usually publish. And for this, we're gonna start out with the woman of the hour herself, Indrasta the Celestial Spear. As you can see, I've sentinelly primed my model, but you could probably start out with either a black undercoat or a white undercoat. It's really up to you. I just prefer the sentinel one myself. That's enough talking, so on to the painting stage. Now, as you can see, I've done several sub-assemblies on this model. It being push fit, you actually don't have to glue it at all. So we're going to start out with removing the wings, but I think I might have to take it apart even further during the guide to reach all those hard to reach spots. We're going to start out with applying two thin layers of Dwarven Gold from scale 75. Just make sure that the previous layer has dried properly before applying the next one and try to make these layers as smooth as possible. It will really pay off when the model is finished. And I guess behind the legs would qualify as one of those hard to reach spots that we needed the sub assembly for. Now, just a quick word about the Scale 75 range before we continue. As you can see, they have a quite vibrant range of colors. However, I would not recommend the scale colors if you're a new painter and don't really know what you're after because they have a super matte finish. So your models can actually turn out looking a bit unnatural even. However, the metal colors is where it's at. As you can see, they have a shitload, can I say shitload? Yeah, I can say shitload. A shitload of options, be it from well, anything from like red or purple metals, but also a really solid uh, grey metal colour and a lot of gold to pick from. And I can wholeheartedly recommend them. Back to painting. Next up I've mixed a 50-50 Lamian Medium and a Gruxar shade. And I'm gonna apply it over all the gold on the model. Make sure it doesn't pool and that it remains in one thin layer. The shading really helps you to see what is what on the model really and gives you a rough outline on what the final result should look like. While we wait for the Agrax to dry, this is a good chance to start painting the grey metals. We're using speed metal which is quite bright as our first coat. This is mainly because it interacts really well with the contrast we will apply later. Now, before we start highlighting the armor, I'm gonna give you a brief life hack. If you find it hard to know where to place the light on the model, just take a black prime model, place it near a light source, and then snap a picture with your cell phone to see where all the reflections are. And then you just copy that whenever you paint it. Okay, on to the highlighting. The first highlight we're gonna use is Elven Gold from scale 75. And the technique we're gonna use is a type of true metallic metal, which basically means that we're gonna use true metallics in order to paint in a non-metallic style. So highlight the armor the same way as you would do non-metallic. And remember what I told you about the black prime models to find the reflections. Painting the correct reflections on a non-metallic model, or in this case a true metallic model, is really easier than it seems. Next up we're going to do a 50-50 mix of White Alchemy from scale 75 and Elven Gold from scale 75. White Alchemy is really an excellent color to brighten up any metallic paint to be honest and I strongly recommend having it in your toolkit. kit. 
as you can see, the armor highlight really starts to pop in this stage. And just to clarify, we're supposed to highlight the elven gold from the previous stage. So leave a bit of elven gold showing on either side of the highlight that you applied with the speed metal mixed with elven gold for it to transition well from the agrax shaded dwarven gold. As you can see, I've returned to my Agrax Earthshade, this time undiluted. Paint the shadows, but make sure when you move the paint around that the heavier part of the shade will be in the deepest shadow and then move it towards the light so it gets thinner and thinner. You can really move the paint around on the model until you're satisfied. What I do recommend though is not moving around paint that has like slightly dried. That is a recipe for disaster. And then we're gonna add a final highlight of pure white alchemy to the very brightest spots in the armor. This is where the reflection is the brightest and like the top of any rivet etc. Be really careful in this stage as less is more and if you overdo it you might actually ruin your paint job. And remember, you can always go back to your Agrax Earth Shade to deepen any shadows. As I mentioned before, we're going to use a contrast to shade the metal parts. In this case, Basilcanum Grey. Leave the sword unshaded for now as we will return to it later with a different technique. Basilicanum works almost the same way as Nulnoil except it's a lot less uh, transparent giving you a really dark metal feel on the metallics. And then edge highlight all the scales with white alchemy. Or you could just use speed metal if you think this is too bright. Now for a really hard part, the weapons. We're basically gonna shade down the weapons with Nuln Oil, painting where we want it to be the darkest part. And we're using a bit of a style that I implemented on many of my 40k armies with power weapons, except then I use like blue to white rather than a black shade on metallics. As you can see, I'm adding shade, like in a zigzag motion opposite to each other over the sword to uh, make this effect. And as I said, this part is super, super hard. What you wanna do is move the shade around so it's darkest in the middle and then fades towards the lighter parts. Then you wait for it to dry and add another coat of non oil in the darker parts of the blade. And if you feel like it, you could add some Basilicanum Grey on the darkest part of the blade if you want it to go almost all the way to black. It's quite effectful on a tabletop, but it's not for everyone. And then we're gonna use white alchemy to edge highlight all the sharp edges of the blade. This includes the edge going down the center of the blade. Oh, and bad news, the sword has two sides, so you gotta do the same thing on the other side. Sorry. And that's part one all done. I'm gonna include a list of colors in the description that I've used. I 
hope you like the guide and if you like it enough there should be part two coming out soon which will also be linked in the description do not forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you all next time